Old Italian School, Porpora, Tosi, Ferri, Caffarelli, Farinelli, Bernacchi, Marchesi. These are the names of the great teachers and singers of those times, and as we see, Castratis were the most popular. Florence school reforms made possible for singers to sing in more legato style, in more arioso style, or Caccini style, if you like. These types of singing were developed in operas of Monteverdi and Scarlatti, where, along with Cantilena singing, the text was still very important. But starting with the end of the 17th century, dramatic action and the text were becoming less and less important. Vocal virtuosity was becoming a fashion. The achievements of old Florentian school were lost. In fact, opera was downsized to the concert performance with costumes. Opera became a little bit of a circus, where great technicians competed with each other. Vocal technique reached boundaries unknown before. Famous Castrato Ferri was able to sing 18 two-octave scales on one breath. Porpora writes his Il Famoso Folio di Porpora, which famous Castratto Caffarelli studied for five years. There were two famous schools, Bolognian with Pistocchi and his student Bernacchi, and Neapolitan with Porpora and his students Caffarelli, Farinelli, Umberti Porporino, Appiani, Salimbelli, and Teresa Mingotti, Caterina Gabrielli. Famous tenor and a later teacher, and also the author of Opinioni, Pietro Tosi, came from Bolognian school. Pietro Tosi was himself a castrato, so the most of the suggestions he gives in his Opinionis are for castrato voices. As I said before, a great singer and a teacher and author of Opinioni, Pietro Tosi, comes from Bolognian school. Some of his quotes, to my opinion, sound very up-to-date. Vocal teacher should lead his student to high notes very slowly and cautiously. Intonation of the modern singers are very bad. There are few exceptions, but most of the singers do not sing correctly and on right pitch. Majority of musicians don't really know that there are two semitones because harpsichord or organs don't have those semitones. Teachers should take great care paying attention on students two registers, head and chest. The voice should not sound either nasal or glottal. These two terrible habits cannot be corrected when singer gets used to it. Singer should unite these two registers as if they were just one. If we don't hear words, then there is no big difference between voice and any instrument. In fact, singer has only advantage over instruments because he can sing with words. Often ambition makes better singer than just a great talent. Singer without confidence is miserable. Practicing only one hour per day is not enough even for a genius. The best student in the world is the one who is his own student and his own teacher. The great singer should be able to improvise or to make his own variations. The singer who cannot improvise or make his own variations cannot be regarded as a great artist. Singer should not mimic anyone because mimicking is for the student and not for the great artist. The best vocalist in the world is always studying. Study mistakes of others. It doesn't cost you anything and it's a great lesson.
Another great work on vocal art is Mancini's Pensieri e Riflessioni Pratiche Sopra il Canto Figurato, Practical Thoughts on Virtuoso Singing. Voice generally is divided into registers, namely chest or head or falsetto. I say generally because in some rare cases singers are able to sing with one register. About position of the mouth, Maestro Mancini says that there is no general rule for every singer. He prefers open mouth, but with no exaggeration. Then Mancini criticizes schools, methods, and some teachers. Today's schools are quite terrible. Modern teachers are greedy for money rather than for fame. They let them graduate early, and they have early careers. And what is the result of that? Total destructions of the voices. Oh, oh, oh. 